like a nice kick drum. Do that on the off beats. Yeah, accentuating traditional percussion. Hey, my name is Dan Shimolinsky. People like to call me Shimmy, and you can too. I am a bassist, sound designer, and composer living in Los Angeles, and we are back checking out Clang. Clang, g -g -g. <laughs> It's an awesome percussion library. This deals with metallic hit sounds, and it's so useful, it's so cool, and it's thanks to viewers like you, because this is the ultimate example of sound paint listens and sound paint delivers. The idea for this library came from a Discord user who specifically requested a metallic hits library, something that they could superimpose on traditional percussion, something that kind of dealt with using metallic hits to accentuate percussion when needed. So get ready to hear some harsh metal hits, all the clangs, spangalangs, smacks. We've got some custom stuff that was created specifically for this library and also using source material from a session of anvil ensembles. So actually hitting anvils. It's all things metal, it's all things metallic, and I can't wait to dive into it with you today. If you are not a member of the Discord community, take a moment to pause this video, hop on over and join it because there's a lot of amazing discussions going on. You can interact with me, other content creators like Natalie and Darren and all the devs that are kind of been working on sound paint to really just deliver the highest quality experience to you. It's all an open forum of communication, suggestions, comments, sharing work. So just a big old plug for the discord. It's a lot of fun and we listen because gives us stuff like this. So let's jump in. What is clang? Well, clang has two parts. It has full and high. And full is just basically all of the samples laid out top to bottom, and it's everything. So I can go ahead and play that for you now to give you an idea of what you can get in clang. Like a nice kick drum. Do that on the off beats. Yeah, accentuating traditional percussion. Love that. So yeah, we're hitting stuff today. <laughs> You can tell there's a huge variety of what we're hitting, what kind of mallets are being used, what kind of treatment there is, what kind of EQ treatment, stuff like that. I mean, it is just the most industrial percussion sound you could possibly ever want. This stuff works great in film scores, works great layered with other percussion, as I mentioned, but also you can just kind of groove with this stuff. We'll soon see in the program section. Moving on to Clang's high. Now, I'm not actually sure if this is just all of the high frequency range stuff pulled out of full and put into its own part, or if it's a cutting low frequency treatment of the full part. I'm not sure, maybe you can decide, but most of the time you're gonna probably want some pretty high frequency range sounds. It's just what cuts the easiest in a mix, especially if you're mixing with other percussion. It's great to kind of have this sub menu part of just the high stuff, because that's just a really easy way to get to sounds faster. So awesome. It's one of those sounds that's so unique that, you know, it doesn't get used every day. You're not gonna have this kind of industrial percussion vibe in everything. It's not the right fit for a lot of projects, but when you need it, it's like the only thing to go for. 
So that's it, just two parts, very clearly labeled, no fancy bells and whistles, <laughs> but a lot of bells. There's a lot, there's definitely some bells in there. And let's head over to the program section to check out that stuff in action. I created about 10 of these, another 10 I think Tarek created as well. So I'm just gonna click around and see what we find. I mentioned you can groove out with this stuff and I meant it. I created two grooves here with the ARP section, just some very basic treatment in effects. Got a low pass filter, some analog distortion and a digital reverb and all that stuff is controlled via the mod wheel. Well, the filter at least. Yeah, this is Groove 2. Right? Isn't that awesome? This stuff just reminds me of like Stomp and Blue Man Group and just taking things that aren't naturally percussive instruments and making them percussive. It's such a fun tool to use. Let's check out Groove One as well. Oh, and then I did a groove utilizing the filter and the ADSR on the filter, which is something that I tend to sleep on just because the trigger modes don't always work for the kinds of sounds I'm creating. But if I'm doing a sequence and I really want to like accentuate what's happening with the filter, I'll turn it on and it works really well, really nice. Yeah, so a lot of motion on the envelope of the cutoff on that analog low pass filter all the way down to almost just hearing the natural resonance of it combined with the cluster of percussion that's happening. Super effective, super fun, and yeah, it's one of my favorites. Let's check out one that is not mine. This is called Behold, it's one of Tarek's. We've got a ladder filter happening here, quite a lot of reverb, 100% actually, going through another filter. Oh, that's really cool. Let's see what's in our matrix here. Nothing. So that's just what you get. And this is the full range of the part. So this filter treatment here is really the star of the show for Behold. Oh yeah. Nice. Anything can be an ambient noise generator with a low enough cutoff filter, lots of reverb, and a slow enough attack on your ADSR. Then I did some church bells. This is kind of fun. Just a very subtle bit of delay to kind of add some distance as if the church is further away, but very, very fast integers here on the uh, left and right delay. Let's check out Eyes in the Dark. 
Oh, and we have a little bit of ARP information here. Oh, and I'm noticing we are utilizing reverse play on all three of these parts, but no limitations to the uh, notes. So this will be really cool. That is spooky. The secret sauce there is a lot of different reverse layers. That's really, really neat. And we also have just a good amount of feedback on that Bucket Brigade delay. That's kind of what's giving you that kind of like almost metallic harmonic resonance that's just really making the whole thing that much more spooky. Here's another one of mine called Industrial Music Box. You know, I always gotta go tonal. I always, I don't know what it is about these percussion libraries that I always just like latch on to a couple different samples that really, I think have a distinct pitch to them. And then I try to create something that you can play. And so that's what this is a result of. I've got four parts in here, some from full, some from high, all one note stretched, a little bit of ladder filter, which I think you can control, yes, with the mod wheel. It sounds to me like a little uh, music box. Oh, I even wrote a uh, little thing for it. Let's check it out. Yeah, good fun. Let's check this one out. It's called Old History. Oh, I like that a lot. The eerie kind of spooky stuff, it always comes from metallic sounds if you really think about it. It's always like bowed cymbals and bowed saws and stuff like this. I mean, it is super, super cool. Really nice treatment here. Then I made a couple of hits, just things that I found were sounds that complemented each other really nicely and I wanted it to kind of shock you, it kind of like a stunner kind of hit. So this one's called Ringer because it's got a very distinct overtone that kind of rings past the hit. So while the attack sounds of metallic stuff are very cool, I also think the harmonic results and the trail that comes after it is equally as cool. Then I did a couple that were really meant to kind of just shake you up and be very intense, kind of in the horror genre probably. And I did a, <laughs> did a lot of EQ dancing on this one, as you'll see. That's the only effect I have on it. And it's all at zero for the initial hit. But if you really want to spice things up, Oh yeah. Ooh. I actually found that bringing in that kind of low wash was more effective for the hit I was going for. But I left it up to you. Gave you a totally flat version and a more dynamic one. 
In a second, we'll create our own program from scratch, and I definitely want to do a kind of hit like this because it's really fun to find sounds that complement each other. I mean, there are four layers here, and they all serve a purpose, so I will definitely do that with you momentarily, but I'll show you the second one. I did a very similar thing with the EQ. Yeah, so this is the second shock hit. Definitely a little tighter of a hit. As you can see, I did some envelope work here as well on, I think just the second part. But then that EQ, ah, uh, it's where the magic happens. Sometimes you just gotta go and fish out the things that aren't kind of giving you the desired effect. It's really a sound that's mainly focused on low rumble, clarity in the kind of mid range and, and super, super highs. So that's how I arrived at that EQ. Let's check out ticking clocks. Oh yeah. Very clever here. Let's turn these guys on. Yeah, so this stuff is metal, so you can get really clicky, tippy, tap kind of stuff by giving yourself some very, very short decay envelopes here, which he did, very nice. So let's go ahead and make a program from scratch. And I wanna do one of those kind of shock combo hits. I think it's really, really cool when you start kind of picking and choosing sounds that complement each other. And this stuff layers so ridiculously well, you can kind of just build them from the bottom up in terms of like thinking about frequency ranges and the overall effect that you're trying to go for. So I'm gonna find the kind of bass sound for our hits, what's gonna have the most low end information and go from there. I like that one because it kind of covers both aspects, the ultra, ultra highs, like that really, really shrill kind of, that kind of sound, and also covers the super, super lows. It's kind of a punchy kick sound in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and one note same that, and just start there. I'm gonna turn that off for a second and pull up another Clang's full part here and see if we can find something for kind of the mid-range. I'm going for something with a bit of noise, a bit of kind of wash to it, something that's going to kind of sit in between those two ranges that we just found. That's the most nasally and kind of mid-range sounding one that I think I found. Let's see if they play well together. We're gonna one note same it. And see how that sounds. Nice. So we have it kind of sitting in between uh, the first part, which covers the super low and the super high. And this is kind of that mid-range nasal sound. What I'm going for is a full spectrum hit. So like one that covers the ultra low, the ultra high and everything in between, which is kind of what we have at the moment. That first part, I love parts and specifically samples within parts that cover two aspects of a sound. So that's kind of like getting an extra part in my opinion. I'm gonna see if I can find something kind of slappy to get kind of in that upper harmonic region, like mids to upper, something with some motion to it. So it's not just a hard hit, but maybe there's like multiple aspects to the hit. Something like that, where it has a little bit of a roll, that's interesting to me as a listener. That's the one for me. Ah, uh, the ring is a little too long. I don't know if I want that for this specific uh, 
So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is grab an envelope, pop over to part three, drop our sustain to zero, and kind of dial in the decay to a point that makes sense. That's pretty natural. Yeah. I like that. And I like to just keep the release around the same just in case I like pull my hand off too early or something. It should be similar timing. So here's three sounds together that I am quite fond of. Yeah. That is a full range hit. And then I got one part left. I think I'm just gonna find like whatever the most intense, clean, straight ahead hit is. I'm gonna stick with full for now and see if I can find something in there. I like that. It's the cleanest. It's not too long. There's not too much of a trail. So let's see where this all brings us. Nice. Now remember that. That's really cool, but we're going to do some stuff with envelopes, levels, and an EQ to really bring the most out of this full spectrum hit. So I like to drop the volume down to zero and kind of work part one by one, remind ourselves what everything is. So yeah, that's our bass hit and also our super, super high. Not gonna touch the tone control on that, but I know that I'm probably gonna want these two to talk to each other. So I'm probably gonna balance, because these are kind of my initial attack sounds. I kind of think of two and three as filler and kind of the substantial aspect of the hit, the percussive aspect of it, that's really one and four for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and just check out part four here. And I'm actually gonna grab the tone knob and bring it up a little bit. Not quite there. That's cool. And then I'm gonna try and balance them as best as I can. Yeah. That's nice. Then as for the stuffing of the uh, hit, we're gonna bring in part two. And I might actually pan two and three a little bit opposite each other. I like to kind of straddle the center if I have stuff like this. So maybe 25% right and 25% left. And then I'm gonna deal with those two parts individually. And I actually think two has a little bit too much of a trail. And it's a quieter part, so I'm gonna give that a little bit of a boost. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm gonna maybe try bringing the tone down a little bit on part three. Since it's kind of a, a washier, mid rangier sound. Yeah, and pan it even more, honestly. We could go up to like 40%. Yeah, that's nice. That's the crunch. That's the bass and the super high, which we can now truthfully bring down a little bit. I'm gonna remix it back up. And then this guy we can bring down just a touch as well. And I think part four is still ringing out just a little bit too long. Yeah, so we'll do that same decay trick. Nice. Bring it all together. Cool. Nice. And I want to have a really kind of short punch to this, maybe bring up the gain a little bit. So that's a perfect candidate for compression. I always like to start with the preset just because it kind of gets me to some basic places very fast. So we'll try acoustic drums. Ooh, that is loud. <laughs> so we'll bring that gain down just a touch. And uh, we don't need the threshold quite that high. But I do like the ultra fast attack. 
fluff up the release a little bit more. That's punching. That's that's definitely hitting. I'm gonna do an EQ for this and I'm gonna probably do EQ 10 because that to me is the more appropriate one for stuff like this. You know, I really like just grabbing a band, raising it and seeing if it gives us the desired effect based on where we move it. I basically just like to go through the hit and move each band around and see if I like it. So I start really high up. It's doing a little bit, we'll keep it a little bit boost, but I think the real low end frequency that we're gonna want is gonna be this band here. Ooh, hoo <laughs> yeah. We don't wanna blow out the speakers, but maybe around there. Yep. This guy, probably not. Yeah, too much, too much resonance. So I'm actually gonna pull a little bit of that out. That's gonna allow our low frequency in the kind of 50 to 60 range speak a little bit more. Not really anything there. Kind of like a little bit of that hollowness there. A little boost is okay. There's our wash. I don't want all of that, but a little bit accentuated is okay. Not that much, actually. Maybe around there, just a little bump. Whew, that is harsh. Apologies to our uh, headphone users. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that, that is not really doing anything for me. Oh yeah, oh, there's the clarity. And then I predict that this is gonna be a nice one to bump all the way up. Yeah. And I wanna talk about this slider here. I don't think I've ever mentioned it, but this EQ is unique in the sense that the Q size is not changeable based on each band. It's the Q for all of your bands. So if we pop over to EQ5, you will note that each band has its own individual Q size. And if you're not familiar with what Q is, Q basically is the width of the band. So whatever you're bringing up, is it a very fine band or is it a thicker band? And the higher the number, the thinner the band, the more specific it sounds. So basically think about low, kind of wide, and if you bring it up, it shortens that. So it's just targeting a very specific frequency range. So you can mess with the Q size on EQ10 as well. And this is another one of those where I like to just kind of say, okay, this is the most broad, it's pretty harsh. This is the least broad. You know, I like it where we had it. I like it where we arrived at things. Yeah, let's just leave it in the middle. Next thing I'm gonna do is I would love to have the option to at least bring in a delay. I think that would be pretty cool. I'm gonna turn off DAW sync just because, yeah, that's not so great for working the same project as this voice recording. I kind of want it to be slappier than that. Yeah. Lots of feedback. Oh yeah. Maybe not quite as large of a stereo field. I like that. Maybe a little longer on the right. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I'm gonna go ahead and do the CC assign to mod wheel there to just give me the option to bring that in as I want. Don't always want delay, you know? And then I'm gonna put this whole thing through a nice big reverb and I'll tell you which work best in my opinion for this library. Really, really like plate. Plate is awesome for metallic kind of bright percussive sounds. It's really, really effective, especially when you get the time kind of above like 80%. It's really awesome. Yeah. Because a plate is a naturally resonant metal thing in and of itself. So if you put metallic hits into it, it's just gonna accentuate the kind of ringy harmonic stuff that we love from this type of hit.
Shimmer is cool if you want to add some pitch, and I actually do like the modern digital one as well. That's very cool. Granular, that's okay. That's its own thing. And Lexi is a little too clean. I think these are kind of harsher hits, but let's go ahead and just stick with plate and kind of see if we can really mess with some settings here. I don't want to diffuse the input too much because it is a percussive hit, but I'm totally fine with a little bit of tail diffusing. And the pre-delay, I typically cut that, but it's actually kind of nice here. Yeah. I like it. So that's a really full spectrum, very complex, very unique, clean, expensive sounding hit, if I do say so myself. And we got there very quickly. I mean, we just kind of pick stuff that works together. When I come up with kind of hybrid parts like this or parts that have you know similar aspects, they all come from the same library and you just wanna kind of build something magical within a world, this metallic industrial world. You just wanna be very clear about what kind of sound you're going for and how you're gonna achieve the different checklists, if you will, to get to that sound. So we hit our first part, we got that low kind of rumble and also the ultra high. Our fourth part really accentuated the attack of it and then two and three are kind of our mid-range sandwich stuff. And the result is just a really, really nice, full spectrum, rich, dynamic sounding metal hit. I could do this all day. And that hit sounds completely different from the other hits that I've made for this specific library. They all are gonna sound a little bit different. And you're gonna need a different kind of thing depending on what you're going for. Obviously, if you want it to kind of rumble the sub frequency a little bit more, maybe you darken that first part, or maybe you find something where it's all rumble and you just have it be your low frequency or you pair it with a sub hit or something like that. But this stuff, rocks. It rocks to pair with other percussion, more traditional stuff. It rocks to stack like this within the library. And they're just super, super quality. So definitely can't recommend this one enough. It is just a really fun thing to play with. So I hope you enjoyed our dive into Clang. And I hope you picked this one up because it's a heck of a lot of fun. Definitely want to see how you guys use this. So feel free to tag me in all your creations or on the Discord. You can share it. And yes, join the Discord. I was serious about that. If you didn't pause the video and join it, go do that now because it's a really fun community and just speaks to the nature and the warmth and family aspect of sound paint and the relationship between consumer and developer. It's really, really fun. Just always trying to fulfill the requests of the community. And this is the ultimate example of that. So that was Clang. This is Shimmy signing out. Take care.